on time? Maybe. We'll see. Hey, Al. Hey, Elizabeth. Oh, I'm bumping bump the tripod. Um, Sitting around making half Persian 31 bezels today. <laughs> it is a special sort of wizardry, Elizabeth, closing the three-in-one. But once you get it, you got it. Except for when you don't. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Mary Hart. So, <laughs> we are doing a whole lot better today. My, I feel like my health bar is up to like 98%. Um, I still have a little bit of a cough that's like clinging on, but huffing the humidifier. Like, it's like right down right right there i'm looking at it like um huffing the humidifier i've been having a tea party with myself all the ding dong day and um so i'm feeling a whole lot better drinking water like it's going out of style um so while my voice is still just a little little not quite where it was that's not gonna stop me well hey ember yeah she's been keeping me company today over on her little area no you're not allowed over there there's fire Stop that. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> trying to, oh, thanks, Sabaya. I bathed. And, okay, I w for those of y'all who don't keep up with the Vonster vlog, in the very thick, like, at my sickest, I was like, I need to cut my hair. <laughs> And instead of using the one inch guard that I usually use for the undercut on my sides, I used Randy's quarter inch guard and went and immediately was like, oh, I messed up. And then I swapped out guards and was like, maybe you don't. It didn't. I had to do both sides super short, which I kind of, not gonna lie, I swing between hating it and loving it. Like, it, ask me again in 20 minutes how I feel about it and I'll give you a different answer. But right now, I like it. Hey, Hawk. <laughs> I have a quick question for you. When you're moving from show to show, how do you store your necklaces so they don't get tangled? Um, honestly, we just throw them into a bin, like in the tackle boxes, because if they get tangled, um, like, now, I mean, we try to pack them in there tight enough that they're not knocking around, like, really loose. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because the more movement there is, the more tangling you're going to get. But I figure if a necklace is going to break from being tangled, it needs to happen when it's still in my possession. Because any weak chain links, anything like that, get weeded out <laughs> um, during transport. So it's kind of like our quality control a little bit to be like, you know, weed out any that wouldn't make it. Um, so yeah, we just we just let them be tangled. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. But I'm not bagging all that stuff. That's okay. Story time. It's kind of early for story time, but I'm going to tell you one anyways. We were, it was maybe our eighth year vending professionally, and Randy and I were tearing down the booth, and the folks next to us were, I mean, they would have been Randy and I eight years prior. It was their first year vending, and they were very carefully taking the earrings off of the earring display and putting them into the little baggies, the, you know, and like just so carefully and lovingly. And one of them looked up at Randy, and Randy was like, "That's cute." Like literally, I heard, I watched him say this to them. They were, she was looking up at him, and he was like, "That's cute," and then just dumps all of the bracelets off the bracelet bar just into a box just <laughs> and I was just like oh god we're so old and bitter <laughs> like in our hearts <laughs> but uh they got a good laugh out of it but yeah that's kind of I guess the point I'm getting at is do what you feel like doing because there is no right and wrong way about it we are quick tearing down and but quick tearing down but whenever it comes to set up it's like oh we gotta resort these back out and untangle them so yeah well thank you i know I, it's i'm kind of i'm gonna be coughing y'all's ear all day so oh mary hart says a friend of mine at work does hers like that it works well for you the good thing is that it grows back oh okay yeah for that yeah and that's why i figured is it'll be exactly where i want it to be for anime st louis um you sweet summer child dumps jewelry in a box yeah Kinda. <laughs> Randy quotes our life. Okay, I'm gonna get the tea party going, y'all. With, I'm not gonna have any sugar right now. Drink them if you got them. 
There's three lights under this, keeping it hot. And it makes me so happy. Also, which one of y'all sent me this? Because I love it. Y'all sent me, one of y'all sent me this like four years ago. And I have not thanked you properly. Not enough. Mandy says, oh my god, hello. Hey, Mandy, how's it going? Um, you could do a whole line of Randy quote stickers. I could, actually. That's a good idea. I should monetize him. <laughs> and I'm having lemon lift tea today. Oh, next time I do that, I need to get slow motion video of it because that was, that was nice. And then the mermaid, she just sits on the outside of my cream bin. It's still way too hot to drink, but we'll come over here and let it cool down. Um, so, hey pro, we are, we're doing pretty good. It's actually way more mild. We were bracing ourselves for another like week long ice blizzard and it's like, Meh. Like, the roads are already dry. It's fine. Uh, we, we got, like, maybe three inches of just powder. Um, no ice, though, which was really nice. Because it's the ice that makes it gross. Like, trying to... Because we live at, like, the base of, like, a hill. And so our little car is just, ee, trying to get up it. And it's... <laughs> From sunny Canada, right on, Barbara. We're getting a major storm Saturday, says Anna. Oh, my goodness. Well, good luck to you. So, uh, today, I'm finishing up some chainmail projects. There are so many fat birds. I put out a suet block, and these, these birds are chonking. Like, I don't want to mess up the stream by showing you guys, but they're just, maybe it's that it's cold, but they're sitting there just like, <laughs> and they're waiting in line to get to the suet block, and it's so cute. They're going to break the branches if they get any <laughs> dummy thicker. Um, but... We're finishing up some chain mail, and then I'm going to be starting in on some star flower earrings. We kind of capped out um, our stone selection for pendants, so now I'm going to be working with um, just some random beads, but for the most part, if you want to be crafting along with me on that for the wire wrapping, I'm using 26 gauge uh, para wire in a bunch of colors. Um, and around six to eight millimeter beads, like, or four to eight, actually, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go ahead and get the camera flipped around. Ah, thank you, Holly. And hey, how's it going? It's been ages. Wonder if Chunk is back. No, Chunk isn't back yet. The hummingbirds, uh, it's still too cold for the hummingbirds, but Chunk's got some distant cousins out there. <laughs> like, they fly off and the branch on the tree is, like, boinging. Spine an undercut? Yeah! Well, I, I've been sporting one more or less since I got my hair cut last time. Is that two years ago? How long ago was... Hey, Wayandy. When did I get my pixie cut done? Was that last birthday or the birthday before that? It was the birthday before that. It was in 2020 because I had no hair for backpacking. Never mind. Thank you. He's just, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but, but this is the shortest I've gone since getting my hair buzzed, but I kind of like it. I don't like stuff touching my ears. Like, like even this one's kind of like, okay, we're going to get the camera flipped around and we're going to get to crafting. So, uh, gotta flip the thing. Right? Oh, it was, it was so nice. I mean, I still smelled like a science experiment coming out of the woods, but I mean, it was a four day backpacking trip. I was just glad to be making it out of the woods. And back to my landy. Okay. So I'm fiddling about with the cord. I'm going to mess about with the tripod just a little bit. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Doop, doop. But did you die? <laughs> exactly, Tashers. This cord's going to make me insane. <sighs> okay, give me a sec. Here. There. Nope. Okay. You know, what even is my charge at? I'm just going to unplug it for a little bit. <laughs> and if you hear Randy talking to somebody in the background, that's our friend Catherine. She's here staying with us for the weekend. Hey, Laura. I'm a Viking mohawk. You're good. Right on, Al. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that needs some sugar in it. It's good. 
touch of sugar. I need to figure out how to make like cubes of sugar be in half. Because I only need like a half a cube. No, that's not going to work. Okay. We'll just plop that over in there. I found these on Etsy, y'all. My cream and sugar set. It's just silver plate, but I don't mind that a bit. I love the antique look of it. But uh, for like six bucks, is a cream and sugar set. Echo, Echo, hey Kelly, what's up? She says, hey, I can see. She says, honey is better. Yeah, but that's all the way in the kitchen. Like, you know, a million miles away. Yvonne in motion is looking for a place to sit. Ooh, right on, Holly. Um, this is cast iron, the cup is. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, honey would have been way better in that. <clears throat> Randy just said Yvonne in motion is looking for a Randy to make her life easier. Well, I already found one. Mm. Okay, yep. Perfect. So what I'm working on here is some 20 gauge, 1 8 inch. Um bright aluminum hey gary how's it going and i'm just making some little byzantine units because i want to make some like romanov weaves i think is the name of the weave or romanov rings rather so i've got one set up here with a four millimeter bead all right on mary Hart. we'll be here Ooh, oh, Dawn, that's such a good idea. Hey, Randy. Oh, yeah. You see? <laughs> we were just looking at a spill, pill splitter last night. I believe that was a pill crusher. Was it a pill crusher? Was that, is that different? Yes. Oh, okay. We'll have to try that out. We'll have to get one and then try it out. Oh, thank you guys. Now I'm all full of sneezing and allergies. And is this dry air, y'all? It just demolished me. So what happened getting sick is the air's so dry that um, I was getting nosebleeds. And then I got a sinus infection, which turned into strep throat, which then moved into laryngitis and just like a chest cough. Not the Rona, but just... And it, like, and then all the flipping back and forth between warm weather and cool weather. Randy says this isn't even my final form. And I repeat them just in case some of y'all can't hear them. But it's, we will carry on. Mm -hmm. That was sugar and creamer. Really? Did you use like um a dried heavy cream? Show it because that'd be handy for just bloop cube and done so I'm making just some little hey Pamela Joe how's it going it's Pammy Joe I'm sorry two three four five six seven and eight so I've got eight more open and I've got four segments of two rings two rings two rings two rings two rings so it's like five segments of two, 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 two. Wait till next week. It's going to be in the 80s. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. BL says I used to get strep once a year, every year as a kid. And that's me as an adult. It's just we like we stock up in the winter. I know I'm going to need about half a box of Alivert and two bags of the lemon mint sugar free cough drops because that'll last me until it's over. Um. And, oh, but this year I added into the rotation. My friend Tracy gave me an excellent recipe for hot toddies. And um, and I, seeing as I'm a grown-up and stuff for like a while now, um, I was like, I'm going to do some science and see if I like this better with Honey uh, Jack Daniels or with Crown Royal. And the jury's still out. More data is required. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> that's some espionage spy stuff. <laughs> hey Letty, how's it going? Wow, all the way in Alaska. 
like coffee cream or sugar and the flavor all condensed into a powder, right? Mm -hmm. Oh no, <laughs> no Gary. Wow, in India, hello. Nia Sa Sani? I'm sorry, I know I'd butchered that. Crown Royal Maple, hello. Okay, so now we're gonna bring this together into some Byzantine. And y'all, if it's blurry, that's just the nature of a live stream. I actually have a tutorial. It's an older one, but it still checks out um, up on the channel for like a Byzantine, I don't know what it's called, just like Byzantine wire wrap ring would be what I would Google to try to find my own video. And so I'm just doing a little bit of business team. I'm not a grown-up, but I'm supposed to play one in real life, right? You're a grown-up, huh? I guess legally, like, I can buy alcohol. And so that's, like, something we haven't really been taking advantage of until here recently. Because, I mean, I needed it for hot toddies. Fireballing coffee. I trust that pro. I'll have to try that out. Right? Which you known? And so we're just bringing these teeny tiny rings together. If you do anything sugar-free, the vanilla creamer liquid is good from Aldi. Right on. Because normally in my coffee, I do the sugar-free um, Italian sweet cream by Coffee Mate is what I've been using here lately. And I like that, but it's there's something about just a little bit of, a little bit of sugar. And I don't go over three cubes a day of actual, like just granulated sugar unless I'm eating like homemade baked goods or something and so now we are going to join the ends no right now I would join the ends if we were making this design but I want to make one that's a little bit bigger Ooh, oh that sounds good Letty Honey, Crown Royal, Lemon, and Hot Water. And that's basically, I did that, but with a cinnamon stick stuck in it. It helps, though. At least helps make being sick not feel so bad. Ooh, Elizabeth, that sounds good, too. <laughs> the best hospital for me, like for just getting better, would be just sitting there and having y'all bring me different versions of hot toddies. <laughs> hey, Kay, how's it going? Hey, Jax's mom. Drambuie. What's Drambuie? Sounds fancy. So I haven't done one of these with four yet. This may end up being an earring or something. <clears throat> I, I can't wait to get my voice back. Oh yeah, that's way too big. For a ring. Oh no. Ooh, Canadian maple syrup. Um, I actually need to check our stores. Um, not like the local grocery stores, but like, I don't know, like, I know that currently I have more honey than what I'll need for a one-year supply. Um, but I don't know how we we're doing on maple syrup, so I might actually need some maple syrup. Yeah, okay. So, 10 millimeters a little bit too big. Do we have an 8 mil in here? Even 8 millimeters a little. 8 millimeter works pretty well for this ring size. Ooh, red hot in your tea. Now that's clever too. <clears throat> I'm going to put more hot tea into my tea. Because the thing with these cast iron teacups is um, the first cup that you pour, 
is going to cool off really, really quick because the cast iron was cold. But now for the second cup, the cast iron's already nice and warm. Aw, Kelly. Okay. So, I mean, that's still a good ring, right? Yeah. That'll be just fine, I think. <laughs> so, from here, I'm going to be using just some 20 gauge. This is actually what we've been sending out in our uh, booty boxes. Red Hot's in your coffee. Okay. Oh, well, thanks, Lydia. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been working this whole... There were a couple of the bed but most of the time I just gone through being sick like while sick I actually organized my whole pantry um, <laughs> and did inventory because I got like a little bit of a head start on our spring cleaning and like drafted out um, some ideas for and that's not really wanting to go through there either well harumph i say how are we going to do this into a ring let's start with the amber now the only thing with this amber ring though oh oh that's a good idea dawn now the teapot that i'm using actually has a little um candle reservoir underneath it <clears throat> excuse me so uh it's been it, it keeps it's almost hotter than it was when I finished brewing the tea. So this amber bead is just a little too small on one end. And this is genuine amber as well, so I'm really hesitant, hesitant to uh, force it. Because I don't want to break it. You have to go put it all back. It's not spring yet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it's 70 degrees in Tennessee today, we just heard, uh, from our niece. So it's spring enough for me. Oof. Lydia says, I've been working two jobs, it's hard. I, I know it. How are you doing on gas prices in Missouri? It's 409. We haven't left our house, so I don't know. But uh, we filled up, I think Randy filled up the car when he went to the post office. Um, after hours yesterday, and I think, I mean, granted, our car, we don't drive much. Our car takes, like, a thimble full of gas anyways. It's a Mitsubishi Mirage. And, hey, baby. I think he's typing. Yeah, I can't see. I don't know how to do this, y'all. Okay. How much was filling up on the car last time? Now, granted, that was still a few days ago, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, only it was just three ninety seven last time we filled up. But I mean, what what do we have? Like an eight gallon gas tank. Yeah. So it's and that lasts us a whole month. Mm-hmm. Ah, gotcha, Anna. Yeah, that's usually the way that the wholesale sites get you is um with the minimums, the minimum orders, which, I mean, if you've got a bead shop or you're doing like a subscription box or something that can justify that kind of expense. But because I've always treated buying from Fire Mountain Gems like a wholesale site because I don't click, you know, check out unless I'm getting their uh, maximum discount which I've never had that be less than you know almost a thousand so we only do like a Fire Mountain Gems order every used to annually but now we do one like every two years and just stock up and hope <laughs> used LOS yes I use let me get it I use this stuff, liver of sulfur gel, and I prefer it, it's, 
I prefer it so much than the hard form of the liver of sulfur. Because this stuff, just a smidge, like just a bloop, um, and then you stir it, uh, will do piece after piece after piece. Whereas with that other stuff, I had to like, it just, I could never get it to dissolve fully. Like this stuff is so convenient and easy to use. And I just got it on Amazon. <clears throat> but, uh... Liver of salt, it's pretty, pretty user friendly. Like, just don't like breathe it or drink it or put it in your eyeballs and you'll be fine. Right on tidbits. That's very similar to us. Like, unless we're traveling, we don't, like, for work, uh, we just don't really go anywhere much. Like, we like to go on walks and stuff, but. Wow. Yeah, and I don't want to, I don't want to put a damper on anybody because I know that there's a whole lot going on in the world right now, and there has been for a minute, actually. Like, um, for anybody who's been awake through 2020. But we, we do try to use uh, the live streams as an opportunity to not just stick our heads in the sand and ignore, you know, existence for a little while, but to just, you know, kind of chill out and celebrate all of the positive things that are in life. Because the rest of the world will still be there when the live stream's over. So we just focus a lot on just keeping it chill and crafty. It's like getting to go to like a, a crafting book club or something for an hour or two. You can just leave all your problems at the door and just come in here and chill and hang out and have some tea. Get frustrated at projects a little bit. Oh, you're good, Tashers. Multitasking like a champion question though. I'm making pendants for in the booth and I'm trying to decide on a length to make a chain. Alrighty, well, <clears throat> I can actually show you if I can rummage it out. With Randy and I's display, and the reason we started doing this is because, like, and it was, it was when we were doing, we were trying to do flea markets because through the colder month, it's months, it was really nice to try to get to do something that was indoors. But at the flea markets, I don't know how many times we had somebody come through, just different people. And like, if there's a pendant strung up on a chain, they'd be like, well, I don't need the chain. Can I get some money off? And I think that's just, you know, when people are going yard selling, they're not looking for unique quality handmade jewelry. They're looking for cheap deals. And I think at the, some of the flea markets, people are there looking for cheap deals. So that got us thinking and it kind of affected our setup and stuff as well, that we just sell our pendants and then we offer chains for like a $5 or more upcharge. Or we, we would do like leather cord for like a dollar, you know, just something. Um, and then if the person was like real nice or bought a bunch of stuff, we'd put it in for free. Um, but so we actually display our pendants without chains and it's just that's also why we don't sell sets it's because people would be like well i don't want the earrings give me some money off and i'm like Ugh. <laughs> grumble grumble <laughs> you know frustrated vendor noises um <clears throat> and uh so we sell our chains separately and this is the little box that we keep all of our chains in and we added a new chain to the lineup this year, and that is, these are from the Ring Lord. All of our chain is from the Ring Lord, because I trust them whenever they say what material the metal is. And these are stainless steel ball chains that have been really uh, popular with certain, like, um, punk styles. The gentlemen like them. Um, and so, but it's, it's just, it's an option. And then we do our... And those are at a 20 inch. And so this is how we do our chains, <clears throat> is we do 18 inches for the main part, and then we do four to five inches of an extender chain where you can hook anywhere along the chain. And then what we do is um, if somebody wants one shorter, that they're like, oh man, can I get this at uh, 16 inches because I want to wear it as a choker. Is I'll just remove this ring right here, snip an inch or two off like to get it to be the length that they want. Um, the tackle boxes that we keep our inventory in have, they were tackle boxes for fishing, so they, all the bins have a, a ruler on top. 
um, anytime, Julia. This is my escape, too, just so y'all know. Like, I, I, I need this. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. Thank you, Shell. Shell Elizabeth for 99 cents. Thank you so much. Um, but, and then if somebody wants a 30-inch necklace, what we'll do is we'll add some more extender chain maybe to the other side. Or if I have some chain on me or something, like, we'll find a way to make it work. But I just knew that if I made all of my necklaces at 18 inches, then everybody would want them at 20 inches. If I made them all at 20 inches, everybody would want them at 18 or 24. So we just really tried to, that was the only way that we could find to make it more or less easy to accommodate everyone and it's great for gift giving too because if you know that well I, I know that they like to wear their necklaces a little bit longer but i don't know how long having that four inch or five, four or five inches of extender chain can really you know just give you a little bit of wiggle room or if you're like me none of your outfits have the same uh length of like depth of neckline you can adjust the necklace to the length uh, like to fit with what we're what you're wearing Hey, Steffies. I'm doing better and better all the time. My, um, <coughs> my voice and cough are still a bit on the fritz, but, um, hey, Bianca. She says, hi, Yvonne. I'm glad I catched you live and love your vlog. Oh, I'm so glad that you do. We love doing it. So, oh, Adrian asks, do your clay pendants sell well? I'm thinking of trying that medium, but scared to buy all the tools and supplies if they won't sell. That's a really good question. And it's so difficult to gauge and answer because we'll have some events where a certain style, like our electroformed stuff, our clay stuff, and some of our styles of wire wrapping, um, all of those we have to charge just a little bit more for. Um, except for some of the different uh, clay designs but sometimes like pieces just won't sell and won't sell and won't sell and then we'll do an event and randomly those will be the only things that are selling so it's so difficult to gauge the best thing that I can recommend is to look at making designs that are within like make some designs that you're comfortable selling at five dollars or ten dollars or fifteen or twenty and like and so have some that are super affordable have some that are you know definitely you know you're making your money off of it you know something that you've put a lot of time and energy and effort into charge what you need to charge for it but just have a broad spectrum of pricing because that way you'll really be able to gauge if people love the clay work but it's just out of their budget they still have slightly more affordable options that they can indulge in so and like for a five dollar design would be maybe um you know rolling out just a pretty clay blend like a marbled clay blend and using like some cutters to make like some leaves and just make like a leaf pendant like that's something that sold really well for us over the years <clears throat> so i hope that that kind of answers your question a little bit and that kind of goes for everything if you're not certain how a material or style is going to be received um, try finding a way to make a low cost option, a medium and a high cost option. And then you'll really be able to, cause sometimes it's like, uh, with some of our chain mail pieces, this has given me just a heck of a time. Um, with some of our chain mail pieces, it was like, well, do people not like chain mail or do they not like that this necklace is $150? Um, and so to be able to gauge that I'd make some things like these rings and stuff that are you know, we sell for 15 because it normally doesn't take me this long because I'm not lollygagging. Um, but yeah, that we normally sell for 15 and it, those sell pretty well. So it's, people do like chain mail. They just, you know, our, our client base at the events that we go to have a budget and I respect that. But oh boy, does it make my day when somebody buys one of those $150 pieces? <laughs> like, ooh, that's a bill. Like that's a whole bill getting paid off of one jewelry sale. Might not be my biggest bill, but I'll take it. On how much chain do you buy in bulk? I went to Fire Mountain, but I can't find chain like you have. Um, I get my chain, like I said, from the Ring Lord, and I buy it in their big old spools. They have like a bulk spool that's like 50 bucks. Um, and if you'll give me a sec, I'll actually dig it out. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get this. There we go. Okay, so I've un. I've unwoven a bit of the chain mail where I had connected two of the links. And now I'm going to come through and I'm going to hook through. 
Ha ha, that's how we do this. <laughs> oh, Kelly, that struggle is so, so real. Oh, I need, I need, I need to be the smarter monkey and use my tools. Give me just a sec, you guys. Where do you get your stretchy rings? I get those from the Ring Lord. From Chainmail Perfection, we get all of our rings from the Ring Lord. What's up, baby? Huh, Cricket? Oh, okay. Well, hey, Cricket, we'll have to check that out. Our, I, I'm not going to lie, our toolbox really does need updated. It's been a minute. What? Oh, well, thank you, honey. <laughs> you, can, you can talk, you know. <laughs> Instead of just pointing, I don't know. Um, yeah, Randy just shared. I'm, well, I just shared. That was Randy, though. Just shared a link that covers the video showing you, uh, Lydia, and anybody else who's interested, how we shop for our chain on the Ring Lord. Like this one is their uh, platinum toned. And it is plated iron, so it is magnetic, but I don't mind that a bit. And I love this stuff. Even with my very acidic skin, it holds up really well. <coughs> Excuse me. What else was I doing? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I've got this thing here that I actually use for soldering. I'm going to take the tips off because I want it to be nice and grippy. But I don't want to lose them, so I'm going to set them in my tray. And I need this to hold this right here for me. I'm going to see if we can do it. Oh yeah, it's holding it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now we can come in, split that open, and split that that away. And now we can, oh yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, thank you tool for doing what you're supposed to do it's like a tool called having a third hand because i was here and i was like i need a third hand behold i actually have four extra hands <laughs> Ooh, tina says have you ever made jewelry using broken pieces of china um i've wrapped some like uh tumbled ceramic like broken ceramic bits but not specifically any like fine-grained china or anything like that and i'm just going to repeat this through right through all four of those rings as well as the link i'm just going to bring this in and close that my favorite thing about this you guys is um they're magnetic so you can position them anywhere and have um and have them holding they've got two big like super long ones and it's just it's very handy it looks like a downright science experiment but i love it oops Went to my tea tray okay i'm going to try to do a live this coming sunday right on lydia if we're available i'm gonna have to check it out what time will you be doing that so there is this is uh in chain mail this is called the Romanoff weave. The dog ock of jewelry, right? Do you coat your chains at all? I don't, Robin. Um, usually any kind of coating that I'd put on would only be temporary anyways because chains rub on the skin so much. Um, so with anything that if I want a copper toned chain, it's either going to be bare copper and the person's going to know right off the bat, like I, I let all of our customers know, this will turn you green, even if there's just a chance that it could turn them green. I'm like, just expect it. Um, <clears throat> or it'll be something like the enameled or plated iron, like how it's in the ring lord, that's just copper toned. Okay, so now, 
some simple wire wrapping and amethyst bag at 8 p.m. your time. Right on. Oh, yeah, that daylight savings time is coming up. Okay. So I'm just threading through, threading on that amber. Now, I'm using a 26 gauge right here because if I had a 22 gauge, that would have been perfect for this. But I don't. So here we are. Mm -hmm. Ah, Hawk says next weekend, the 17th, I set up for the first show of the season. It's going to be a four day outside. Whew. And thanks to you, I've gotten some great ideas for me and merchandise and been busy working. All right, on that's the best feeling. Like, nothing feels like, like, for me, nothing matches that hopeful, like, pre show energy of just like get getting things done and that urgency and sense of accomplishment and that nervousness and all that it just I thrive on it if I could bottle it and nothing motivates me like <laughs> I paid money to be here I better make some stuff for sale okay so that's not working the 26 gauge is too soft and thin so I'm going to pull out some Headpins, which typically headpins will be 20 or 22 gauge. So here's some 22 gauge, and this is a shorter headpin. I did get this one from Fire Mountain Gems. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about my my voice, y'all. Like, I wish I were back to 100%, but we'll get there. Now that's an idea. So we take the little headpin, and we're gonna thread it onto the amber, and then feed it just up and through right here now isn't that just adorable oh. hmm now, i don't know how well that's gonna work because wouldn't it be super cute to do something like that and then have like a chain branching off of the shoulders hmm Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Time for more tea. Um, Kit says, Romanoff is one of my favorite weaves. I especially like using it around Rivoli crystals. Those definitely work better for this than round beads. shell hers has a magnifying glass on it okay I'm gonna go back to the 26 gauge so I'm gonna try to do some hybrid wire wrapping on this I'm just gonna go ahead and snip some off it's about 14 inches Tasha says can you shove the head of the head pin down through your weave and just snip off the head and use it as wire at that point yes which is what I'm gonna try to do I've lost where my chamber there it is um <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try it with wire first, and whatever side I wrap on is definitely going to be the back side of how this ends up. So I don't know if it's going to show, but on one of the points where I connected the Byzantine, this is going to be where I do my wrapping. And this may be a new necklace design that we carry in the booth if we make this with some 18 gauge 3 16 um, which are the the rings that we use they are these rings that's about that size just because I know that unless you weave chainmail it just sounds like I'm rattling off numbers so I like to be able to have a visual representation for y'all if I can so I'm going to do five wraps because five is just a nice round number. And I'm just holding it with my hand and feeding it through with my pliers. I'm trying to keep the wraps side by side to each other without overlapping. And I'm going to get in there. I'm going to wait to snip it, too, actually, because 
No, I'll go ahead and snip it. It's just going to get crowded. Make sure there's no pokey bits. <clears throat> and I want to make sure that my wire is exiting in a way that comes up into the pendant or into the focal. Whatever we're doing. Into the bead. That's what it's called. Ooh, hey Mike. Uh, on my handles here, I'm using a product. Uh, you could find it like Warbla. This is Terraflex, but Warbla and Terraflex are the same thing. It's a thermoplastic that has wood pulp suspended in it. So it has a nice like matte finish. Um, and since it's a thermoplastic, you can heat it up and shape it just however you want. And then it dries nice and hard. And I wanted something that would extend my pliers so that I could use all of my fingers. So, but I love the thermoplastic because it is not brittle the way that um, polymer clay is. And I also built up the thickness because the, the plier handles were very similar to this, maybe a little bit wider, but by distributing, um, if I'm going like this, it's putting all that pressure on the inside of my hand and so for just weaving comfortably, there's nothing for my pinky to hold on to. We have a video about this as well. If you search uh, just Yvonne Williams custom plier handles, it should pop up. But I really, really like it. Hey, adventures, how are y'all doing? Okay, so we've got that bead on there. Maybe, yes we do, there we go. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna sew. It's almost like, it, it really is just like sewing. And I'm just going to feed that through. And what we're looking at right now is the back. So I'm going to try to make sure that we're not looping through any of the rings when we come through. And I've threaded through both of these two connector rings right there. <laughs> hey, Kay. Kay Eddies. Yeah, Mike, no worries. Ooh, oh, that's cool, Lydia. Did I just undo? No, no, it's still good. Okay. Oh, did I? No, it's okay. I, I gotta be gentler with this amber. Because it looks kind of like it's sitting almost recessed into the chain mail. There we go. I don't know. I feel like it's super fiddly and I don't... Ugh, it's cute though. I do like it. I was going to try to make a ring out of it, but I think I need the um, the stainless steel as opposed to the aluminum. I was actually going to um, change gears and do uh, star flowers because this has kind of frustrated me. And so usually instead of plowing through, I just take a break. I change gears, take a break, and my brain will figure it out when I'm not looking at it. Did I, I just undid the stitch I just did. Good grief. That's okay, though. I'm going to make sure we're right up there. Yep. After all this, I'm sniffing this out. I don't I don't like it. It's not sitting correctly. Oh there's the dogs barking. How dare the neighbors come and go and live in their home. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna, yep, take the, that off. If I change my mind back, I can always try to do it again. I'm gonna come in and snip this. Because, and the thing is, is this is supposed to be easy. <laughs> is the lie I told myself when I started this project. I was like, yeah, I remember we used to make this all the time. It's easy. Liar. <laughs> Vaughn is a liar. Um, okay, so coming back to that 20 gauge, 
I'm going to find a ring that does, or a bead that does fit on the 20 gauge. There we go. See how easy that amethyst slid on? Yeah, Sam and Z are good boys. So now, when we feed through, I want to come through this side. It'll be all four of these rings. And then we'll put the bead on. I think it's the UPS just stopped at the neighbor. And I think Sam and Z can recognize the way that the UPS truck breaks the sound. And so they freak out. Okay. So that was a little too far up. Pardon me for just a sec. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> right on, Kelly. This is the problem with doing a design of something that's triangular and wanting it to, like, go all the way across. I know what we're going to do. Okay. So for this style of ring, almost all of the rings that I make use the simple bead ring as the base, like as the course concept. So now we've got that on there. And I'm actually going to thread one wire through where I want it to go. And then I'm going to thread the other wire through where I want it to go. And we're going to see if we can just force this into happening. Probably not, because it never works out like that. But my voice. Ouch. Whoop. And it's all right. Think pro it's okay when projects are fidgety, you guys. It's okay to get frustrated. It's okay to need to walk away from the project for a little bit. Just be patient with yourself. Be persistent. And don't be afraid to change. Like maybe you need to, maybe I need to be doing something a bit different. Maybe I need to approach it from a different angle, you know. So it's it's okay. You're not failing. You're not doing it wrong. You're just figuring it out. And sometimes it just takes a bit of fiddling to get it good and proper figured out. And sometimes you have to set it on fire and burn the bone, like <laughs> burn the bones, salt the ashes, kind of stuff. But that's fine. It's fine. Sometimes it works, but you did it wrong. <laughs> I didn't thread it through the correct spot on each. <sighs> so I was supposed to thread it through on this side right there. That's okay. That did technically work, so let's try it again. Let's tweak it till we get it right this time. Okay, so we thread it through right there. So then we'll need to thread through right there. Okay. And if y'all are interested, let me know and I'll do a revisit of this tutorial. We're kind of remaking all of our older tutorials that are a bit, uh, not rubbish, but just I've learned some since then and they could use revisited. <laughs> so, and we will always, no matter how much we remake videos, we will leave the old ones up if you prefer those. Hey, Benjamin, how's it going? Ooh, right on, Drax. And just like that. Isn't that cute? And it worked. Ha ha. Uh, where's my ring mandrel? There's my ring mandrel. Okay, and I'm going to make this one for me to wear around, wear around a size 9. So I'm going to make it at around a size 10. Also, um, I've just decided we are not going to be having a tutorial on Sunday. My voice is not... I can't shoot a tutorial like this, you guys. And it's supposed to be lesson three of the wire wrapping master class. And um, I really wanted those to be just as good quality as I could make them. So I am going to hold off until my voice comes back the rest of the way before recording that tutorial for you guys. But I feel like the more I'm talking, <laughs> the more my voice is dying. Um, so I mean, uh, hopefully I'll be able to power through the... Um, the after party today. <clears throat>
<laughs> oh, I'm doing really well, Benjamin. And so, and then I just bind off the sides just like as if it were just a bead with the uh, simple wrapped bead to, uh, ring. And you could finish it in a spiral, but with the Byzantine, I like to leave it a little sleeker. So I'm just going to snip off that excess. And I save all of my scrap wire that's been enameled or just bare copper in a bin together because one day... One day I will have a mill and I will melt down into an ingot my, all my copper and I will draw it out using the uh, mill into my own copper sheet or um, wire or ingot. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm saving it. Hashtag hoarding. <laughs> Ooh, right on, Gary. Oh, well, thank you. I love it, too. Rhonda, it's this is a little you know, I gotta refresh my tea and run to the restroom anyways. So let me get into a fist fight in my tripod. There we go. I'm just gonna get this turned around. So this is the teapot that I've been using and it's on this little bit and it's got three tea lights in there. So this is just as hot as if I had just made it. I'm going to run to the restroom. I'll leave you all there with that little view of what I think is an adorable little, little tea setup. I'll be right back, you guys. Alrighty, y'all, I'm back, and seeing as, as I passed through the kitchen, I have some honey. These are just some little pouches of honey that uh, I hope didn't go bad. No, they're good. But we, I like to use them when we're on the road. That's probably more than enough. And I don't have anybody drinking tea with me right now, so I just got that sitting off to the side. But yeah, Randy got this for me. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it was like a, either an early or late birthday present or ha happy I love you day. I like I don't recall, <laughs> but I love it. And I don't get to use it very much, and I decided... Man, that was a lot of cream. I don't know. I drink tea because I like the cream and honey that's in it. Oh, that is blonde. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a sip of that. Y'all, that's good stuff. And y'all were right. The honey is way better than the sugar. Like the flavor it imparts on the tea. I could have brewed the tea about twice as long, but... I like, uh, my friend Lara used to call it traveler's tea because it's, we'd always forget and like brew our tea for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. She's like, we'll, we'll just put extra sugar in it. It's traveler's tea. I was like, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> but she makes the best tea. And she's like, I just boiled the water. And I'm like, you boil water better than anybody else I know. All righty. So. 
So now, hey Lori. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool, Rhonda. Let me know if you follow along with it and if you make anything. I'd love to see what you made. So this is all kind of twisted up weird now. And I don't know if I like twisted, twisted. What's happening here? Because sometimes forcing that chain mail through, like forcing the wire through the chain mail can distort the weave. So I wanted these two rings to be nice and like standy outy. I don't know. Again, I will fool about with that more later. <clears throat> now we're going to start working on... I'm going to be using more of that 26 gauge. And here I have some blue lace agate beads. And blue lace agate with vintage bronze is one of my favorite color schemes. <laughs> well, thanks, Michelle. I think you got it on Amazon, honestly. But I know I found, I, I wanted enough that it's like, I like to pretend like I have friends who come to my house. Um, and so I was like, I'd love to have two more cups. So I have like four cups for the tea set. But then the teapot's not big enough. So then I just need a bigger tea. Uh, it's a vicious cycle. But then we could have multiple pots of tea going and have different types of tea. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Right, Rhonda? I was actually thinking about label makers today. I was watching some video about a gentleman who makes his own vinegar. And he made these, like, just popped them out of his label maker machine, little labels for the jars. It's like, ooh, labels. Same, Shelly. Otherwise, it just tastes like water that got slapped with a tea bag. Okay. So, we have, I'm trying to remember. Shelly, are you in here? Or Kit? Um... I was going to talk specifically about how I get my star flowers to be even, which has always been a challenge for me, but I've gotten, I've leveled up on it here recently. Ah, uh, nice, Al. <clears throat> so the first step is used to, I would try to like force the beads around and you'll notice how they start to twist anyways. So you just twist it around and boop, perfect little circle. <laughs> You're right, Lori. I love that. And then, especially since this is such a thin wire, two, four, five. Oh, I did it too much. So we don't need to do it a whole bunch. I just want to get it locked down. So three. And now we'll come through and we're going to section off two beads. We have a tutorial out on this as well. And then two beads. And if you think of this as the top and then these ones as the bottom, then we're going to go top and then we're going to go bottom. And it's going to get to a point where this is our first stop. And you'll need to just choose do we be on the cross side or do we be on where we do it nice and wide? And I'm going to have this one cross. And I hope that this will make sense to you guys here in a sec. So crossing would be on this one. On this side, we'd have them be next to each other. It's blurry and it's not showing. Harumph. <laughs> but um, I'll have to see if I can get Randy to come in. And so now we're on the other side, so I'm going to cross them. Because when you cross them on this side, they look side by side on the other one. So now we're over here. So we'll go side by side. And now we're over here, so we'll cross them. And now we're over here, so we will go side by side. And you may have to get weird with it to get it to do that. In that way, I still end up with one side that's slightly more wonky than the other, but I also end up with one side that is like perfect. Um, and that's better than used to. Both of my sides would be wonky. So, and I am just going to continue twisting this kind of loosely because I don't want to stress the wire. But since I'm using 26 gauge, I need to get the measurements to see what two 26 gauge wires twisted together is comparable to. Possibly a 22 gauge. 
but I don't know. It definitely beefs it up, and I just want to beef it up. Huh. I, I'm not sure, Rhonda. It's interesting, though. Right on, Sabea. Yeah, it can it can take some practice. It's a deceptively simple design, but um, whenever we used to teach classes in person um, at conventions, this was one of the, des the designs that we would teach in our introduction to wire wrapping class. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a six millimeter. I think we're going to do this earring, so I'm actually going to use the four millimeter. Uh, or actually the very smallest tip. And I'm going to do one loop. And I'm going to do two loops around just because I do have the wire for it. And I'd always rather it be just a little bit beefier. And we will be connect connecting this to the ear hook with a ring. And so now I'm going to wrap once, twice, and thrice around before giving it a clip. Ah, thanks, Rhonda. <clears throat> hey, Linda, how are you doing today? White hot chocolate with a chai tea bag. Ooh, I love chai tea, like, so much. Especially, like, a dirty chai. Ooh, so it's chai tea with a shot of espresso in it. Yes. Normally, I only get those at coffee shops, though, because I don't have the degree in science required to operate these espresso machines. <clears throat> Right on. You know, I can kind of see how that would work. That is really cool. Like if this bottom bead were great big, like the pad and then these were the toes. Ooh, have you been tempted to make some faux lamp work polymer clay beads? Ron did that was actually one of my very first polymer clay projects because I always liked the look of the bumpy lamp work glass beads. So I had started out by making my own like round like black polymer clay beads and then I'd put little bumps of clay onto them. But it the clay I was using was very, very soft so it never looked as crispy and nice as um, what actual lamp work beads do. So yeah, so that's how that's looking. So now we get to make one that matches. And that's the fun part. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, Lydia, good luck to you. Two, three, four, and five. Hey, Randy, could I ask you to help me out? Could you get down the inventory tray that has the star flower pendants in it? Yeah. So we're twisting around. And I'm going to go one, two, three on the twist tie style twists. Or I'm going to try to. It's heavy. I know. We just put a whole bunch more. Hi. Hey, Kathy. How's it going? Oh, hi. Oh. I tell you, yeah. It's a purple one, same blue. Can you I show everybody? It? Can I have? You can really? Have it. Really? Yeah. Do you want me to wire wrap it and you can wear it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Guys, check out what our friend Catherine just made. <laughs> this is one of the hearts from. See, one side purple. One oh, side blue. I didn't even see that. <laughs> we'll have to wrap it so it's reversible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I finish this. That. You did. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, Catherine. Like oh, me too. I like it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I need a less That's what I am. A bless. <laughs> Same. So bad. <laughs> okay. I'll show it to you whenever we get it wrapped, Catherine. Ooh, Earl Grey. Hot. Okay, so I've done three twists on that. And we're going to bring this over. And then we're going to be doing some wire wrapping after this. Hey, Catherine. Do you want it wrapped in silver? Yeah. Okay. As I thought so, but I didn't want to assume. So then we'll wrap around that way, and then that way, 
and then that way and then we'll get up here to the top and just like how we did on the last one I'm gonna stay on this side of it thank you for getting that tray down honey and then we'll come across and I can show you on one of these larger pieces <clears throat> yeah the beads we're using are blue lace agate they're actually I think they were one of the ones that were given to us by our friend Judy okay so this one's a better example it's a little bit bigger so you can kind of see and one side I made sure that they were not crossing so this one the point to the star look wider but then if we flip it over it's still kind of wonky um but I tried to make them all be crossed but this one up at the top it was still just a little weird <sighs> Debbie says oh my gosh I have to share I just patinaed copper for the first time making a tree of life and some odd pieces I had in waiting ah and she's hooked yes <laughs> Oh, it doesn't actually show us, Lydia, but thank you. We appreciate we appreciate that. So, but do you see how the difference uh, kit on this one, hopefully, uh, these are crossed on one side, and on the other side, we put made sure that they were next to each other. And so just that little difference. Here's another one that... We tried to make sure they stayed crossed all on one side and then on the other side we made sure that the wires were next to each other. Ooh. Right on Guinea. I, I think you might be you might need to refresh that was from a while ago. <clears throat> In kit, that was me too for years. That's just how I was like, well, that's just how they look, you guys. <laughs> so, okay. Um, that side's crossing. And I think it doesn't matter as much on the thinner wires whenever there's more space in between the beads. But whenever you have, like, um, yeah, it doesn't really seem to matter a whole super bunch with the thinner wire on the smaller beads. But if you're having problems, that might be the first thing to address. These are six millimeter uh, out, but I use four millimeter typically for our earrings. <clears throat> uh, and those bigger ones I was showing you were done with 10 millimeter. Hey, Christina, how's it going? Oh! Well, I hope you, you got to catch up with family and stuff, Christina. And congratulations, Debbie. That's so exciting. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, so that should be long enough. I'm going to go ahead and snip this. Crafting and creating most makes me feel better when it turns out not so pretty. I tell myself, not all, is, not all art is pretty. But it's all beautiful in its own way. I'm refreshing the tea. I'm hooked. <clears throat> and we will be continuing the tea party in the after party where we will be probably doing more wire wrapping or answering any questions that anybody might have And I do want to get a cool shot of the cream going into the tea because that just makes me really happy. I'm still playing while watching. Right on, Debbie. More of it rushed up to the surface on that one than uh, on the, f the first one. It's like it all billowed under the surface for quite a while before coming up. Ooh, it's still quite hot. Okay, so we're going to finish this one off. We'd use the smallest loop on the mandrel pliers. And y'all, that's probably my favorite thing about these mandrel pliers is I don't have to re like remember what part of the nose of my round nose pliers I was making my loop on. I can just be like smallest, biggest, medium, check. <laughs> 
and it just it helps me to stay so much more consistent. So it's three wraps around. Right, Kelly? Hey, sweet peach. The fairy houses. Whatever happened to the kitten you found on the porch? Oh, we had found Callie on the porch, and she blessed us by being in our life for three or four years. But um, she actually passed away January 19th of this year. Uh, she was perfectly fine, and right up until she wasn't, she'd had a blood clot. And uh, in a panic, we took her up to the vet, and they were able to fit us in for an emergency visit. And that was... <sighs> we had to get her euthanized, because they were like, the mu muscle, like, we... I still can't really talk about it. It's hard, but we miss her. And it was amazing having her in our life. So, to Callie. Let's get some loops, some uh, jump rings, and attach the ear hooks to this. I lost my ear hooks. There they are. Oh, it, what's it they say? Better to have loved and lost. But uh, the vet was telling us her, uh, the blood clots are because she had an alar enlarged heart. So her heart was literally too big. And because I'm a monster and love mixing metal tones, I'm just going to be using some aluminum rings in 18 gauge 1 8 inch. open them, choose which side we want to be the front, and then attach the ear hooks. It doesn't matter as much on pendants because these are technically reversible. Um, but for earrings, you can establish it because whichever way you attach it to the ear hook, that's just always going to be the front. Yeah, it's, uh, because it, honestly, we had been bracing ourselves for, uh, Sam's got a cancerous lump the size of a basketball that the vet won't uh, operate on because he's so old. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Z's, I mean, born the same day as his brother, Sam, and uh, he's doing well, but they're just, they're old. Ember's old. It's, so it's, we've been, we're bracing ourselves for losing them, and so it just blindsided us. But they're still here and they're still kicking and we're enjoying every day we can with them. So there's those. <laughs> Thanks for the big heart comment. I remember it that way. Yeah. But it's they do, they they come into our lives and they rock it and then they, they always leave too soon. I could have a pet that lived a hundred years and they'd still have left too soon. A lunatic. Oh my gosh, I love that, Chris. <laughs> okay, up next, we are going to be wrapping. Huh? A tortoise. Heck, if a tortoise would cuddle me, I'd keep a tortoise, too. So this is one of the hearts from our February booty boxes that our friend Catherine, who's staying with us today, or over the weekend, uh, colored. Now I'm not certain what she colored it with, but I am going to seal it just real quick while we get the wire ready.
And the way that I'm going to do that is going to look a little jank. But I am just taking the cap off of this Mod Podge Ultra. And I'm just going to... Well, that's not working, is it? What is wrong with my glue? Well, I guess I'll just spray it. There it goes. I put a marble in there to try to... Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of spray it. Oh, I'll do it on the napkin over here. Oh, dang it. The lids. The lid. Ah. It was supposed to be easy. <coughs> Where's the paintbrush? Here's a paintbrush. So we can just paint the uh, sealant in this way the color won't rub off. And you can use alcohol inks, you can use India ink, any kind of acid free stamping medium would um, hold up pretty well on the wood. And I also like these because you can spray them if it weren't sealed. You could spray it with um, like some perfume or just whatever scents or oils that you might like. You can use it as a diffuser necklace because the wood will soak it up and then disperse it or diffuse it throughout the day. Okay, so while that cures, whoop, off to the side. We're going to be using, and this wrap could be done with any sort of, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh no, honey. She said I spent $180 on jump rings from the ring lord and I bought them too small. Dang it. Yeah, well rings don't go bad, so... It's, it's a nice challenge opportunity to be like, um, you know, I have this ring size, what can I do with them? So the wrap that we're fixing to do, I'm just going to do four lengths of 10 inches. And this is a good wrap for anything that you want to be reversible or it doesn't have to be reversible. I mean, technically anything's reversible, really. I don't mind a bit y'all sharing your stories and your losses. I'm just not reading them because I it'll it'll break me. Um, so I will go through and uh, read over the comments again after uh, the live stream, after the after party tonight, when I can afford to have a good old cry and just blow my heart out. But uh, I'm not about to start blowing snot boogers on y'all here during the stream. Okay, so. 40 inches of wire. No, y'all are good. I mean, it's so cathartic to be able to share. And and I, I love that. And it's it's an honor that we can be the kind of community where y'all can share your pain with each other like that cuz it's I mean, it just breaks it breaks it rips the hearts right out of our chest. Um to to lose a fur baby like that. Um I just didn't want y'all think I was ignoring you. This is, this is square wire, an 18 gauge, and then an 18 gauge half round. And we're gonna be cinching this down. Coming around. Smooshing to keep them lined up with each other. And I, I'm real careful about the first couple of wraps just to get everything to sit nice and flush. And then I'm just gonna hold it here with my flat nose and wrap, wrap, 
that. It's such a beautiful like peach and blueberry sunset outside right now with the snow and everything. And I'm gonna come in and smush. And smush. And then whichever side this tail finishes on, boop, that's gonna be the inside. Hey Elijah, how's it going? And then I'm gonna snip on this side. Smush, 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 smush. There we are. And now I want this to be more or less in the center of <clears throat> the wire. And you can even count the bumps on the side. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Cool. So I'm going to count in one, two, three, and I'm going to cover up those three and I'm going to bend to where this middle bump will be left in the center. <coughs> Kit says, what is your go-to ring size for the bezels? Um, 18 gauge, 3 sixteenths is our go-to. We're just going to bend this. What? What's up, Pearl? Oh my, oh my, Parawire too. What is, what's going on? <laughs> oh, and that's so off center. Oh my gosh. This is horribly, horribly off center. <laughs> it's okay. We can make this work. So now I'm gonna. Three, four, five, one, two. I'm gonna try to splice it in as though that never ever happened. And then there we go, there's that one. And we'll give it a smush. And before getting in too much deeper, let's do one more wrap around because since we have a side that's the inside well, I don't know I did air quotes um air quotes are one of those things that sometimes I get it right most of the time I don't it's like when in the room um it's like that's okay he'll get there so I just want to snip this on the inside to where it fits up against the other. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you can just slide them in. And so there's that little bit of space right there. Right there is the cut. That's so dang blurry. I can't even. These live streams, like, I love these live streams, but they suck. Like, as far as video quality, and I don't know what I can do about it. Um, but now, we can come in, we can hold on to it, and we can make it look like we never did it lopsided in the first place. With a lot of smushing. That looks good. Okay. So now we'll smush it into line the rest of the way. And lift that. Snip it. Oh. I'll retrieve that later. And so now, where did our cab go? Just smush it. So there's our heart right hey Yvette how's it going I'm just going to use my thumb or we could use our bracelet curving pliers come in into that tip and curve make sure you're doing the curve correctly which is just the same on each side and then that opens it up enough and fits the wire up against the butt the little booty 
of the heart, just like that. And so now from here, we will use some more <clears throat> half round wire. And I'm gonna cut off about a hand's width on each side, which let's see, how many inches is that? That is about two and a half inches. Y'all can't hear, but I'm humming in my heart, like in my head, but my throat hurts so bad. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Yvette. I would do just a little bit more tea. There is not enough of this stuff. And one little packet of honey goes a long way with all these teeny tiny little cups. But I like it because if I do a big cup, it gets cold before I've drunk it all. I just have to craft my pants. My pants off, okay. Still figuring out how much cream to add in the little cups. <laughs> no, you're good, Letty. It's, it's since we're live streaming, it's the signal goes from the phone to space. And um, just most of the time, it's just, you know, which I don't understand because using the same exact phone, same hardware, same software, same app, um, whenever we do the after parties, crystal freaking clear. It's so frustrating. Like, I mean, I'm glad that the after parties come out nice, but it's still, it's like, could, could ugh. <laughs> So I like to start in the middle of the wire and just start going. Do a wrap, smush it, grab those pliers, bring it around, smush it. Once I get that second loop done, I revisit the first, cinch it down a little bit tighter. And then I'm gonna try to do a full wrap to use up all that wire. This one we can bring around with the pliers. But this one I'm going to have to snip. So I've just lifted it with my fingernail. Hola! <laughs> Gracias, Rico. <laughs> oh, I love that comatose. <laughs> it's a company called Oops, I Craft My Pants. Oh, right, Yvette? Well, good on them for thinking of it and locking it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting those wrapped into the smush, making them play nice together. Okay, that one's a little, I don't know, we'll see. And just wrap. And once you get the hang, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. I've got an idea. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try sliding these off. Oh, this is not going to end well. Um, I slid them off, and I'm just going to flip it over. And let's see if we can cram all that wire back in. Oh my gosh, this might work. 
Maybe. Hopefully. Um, three out of four. Four out of four. Ooh. And just cramming it back down. Oof. And now I can actually finish the ends proper. Oh, and I didn't even snip any off. How fortunate. Okay. So now I'm going to want these equidistant from the center wrap. So I could use a ruler, but I use my hands because I'm a monster. Mm. Mm. Witch and Gnome says, my TV always starts the videos in 144p, so everything is blurry. I'm getting myself in the habit to like your post, change the stream setting, and then join the chat. Aw, well I appreciate the heck out of you, man. Okay, so now we've got our heart. It's going to hug the butt, but we want to shape this around on the side and I'm going to show you all a trick for doing stuff like this right Elizabeth I didn't know if it was going to work but it worked Elizabeth okay so here we have this is a ring sizer and I'm going to find it's a very dusty ring sizer which one of these matches the inner diameter of the curve of our heart. And I want to go a little smaller because we'll have a little bit of spring back. And it looks like a size 8. Yerp. Just a hair under a size 8 actually. <clears throat> so now we can look here and it looks like right about here on the wire is where we need the curve to start so I'm gonna uh pretty sure it's a size 8 babe <laughs> said famous last words um <laughs> and we can always reshape it So just bringing that around and then putting it on the other side on a size 8 and shaping these around. Well, thanks, Anna. I'm not going to lie to you. I came up with that just now, like on the fly. Did not know for sure that it was going to work, but here we are. Okay. So we want to keep that shaped. So I need to bring these in just a little bit more. So to do that, I'm going to put it back on the mandrel at a size 8, and I'm bracing it on the opposite side, and I'm just going to rotate it in just a bit. So same thing on this side. Bringing it in. It's kind of tricky when you've got this extra wire there, but kind of just force your way through. It'll, it'll figure itself out. So again, at a size 8, and just rounding it in. So there's that. Let's fit our cab in. And and I'd always rather it be a little tighter. And see how it's like sitting snug? Snug as a book. Oh, I haven't done the things. When using copper, what's the best way to work hard it for a frame for trees of life like what you're doing? Ooh, whack it with a hammer, uh, Debbie. Like straight up. When I'm doing a tree of life, I usually don't like to texture the frame just because I'm lazy and it, it doesn't slide as much when I'm trying to do the frame, like the branches attached to the frame. So I'll use a nylon head hammer, but a, a solid head hammer, like I can actually demonstrate just real quick. Nope. Okay, there we go. So this is not a gauge that I would use for a rope. Um, I'm looking for some 16 gauge because that is typically what I would use for a tree of life frame, but I have done 18 gauge before. So let's bend that around, just pretend like that's a curve, and just to demonstrate, whoop, see how easy it kind of bends down? 
did not take a whole lot of pressure. So I'm going to reshape it. Loud noises, y'all. And this is 18 gauge para wire, <laughs> right, Elizabeth? Uh, my bonus dad, Fred, he always says, uh, some it, like if he's having trouble with something, he's like, I need a bigger hammer. <laughs> like, that's his go to is like, I'll get a bigger hammer. <laughs> so, I like to take a page out of his book. This is a 13 ounce jeweler's hammer. So, just that little bit of tapping. You can see, I'm actually, I'm adding some su substantial pressure, and it's just starting to curve a little bit. So, we can also, that'll work hard in it, but you can see, it didn't really add any texture. We could use the hard head side. And you can hammer it out. Ah, gotcha, Debbie. Yeah, 20 gauge can be pretty soft. Um, like, just it's just a thinner wire. Um, but, I mean, it's not impossible. Uh, maybe if all you have is 20 gauge, maybe double up on, like, do two wires for the frame. But, yeah, so hammering like that, you can see it's got a little bit of texture. And, again, that's actually gotten it to where it, it just springs right back. Oh, Connie. Connie says if you still want to keep the wire from flattening too much or keep it from getting the texturing from the hammer, you can slam another block on top of the wire on the first block. I, I didn't know that. I, I have used it for just getting the whole thing to be on one plane of existence. Um, we actually did a run of uh, Super Durable T-shirts, Lydia, with our friends World of Strange. And uh, we had done pre-orders, and we may do that again, too, if enough people get interested. But, um, but yeah, so that's... I, I wish I had more like scientific measuring devices to be able to measure specifically how much pressure it takes to bend it. But just the fact that it's springing back into place. Debbie says, would you stack them side by side using two? Um, I think it would be entirely based on your preference for how it looks. Um, ooh, if you stack them side by side this way, like if this is the pendant frame, and they're this way, you could do one that's hammered and one that's not hammered and get some really cool effects. Or you could make it a little bit deeper of a tree of life and have them be this way. That might be pretty cool. So it's, um, it, it depends entirely on artistic uh, discretion. And that's the nice thing about stuff like this and sometimes also the overwhelming part of things like this is that it's like um there's so many options it can be overwhelming so just pick one and try it out see what you think and take notes okay so i'm coming through i got a little bit of distorting like it started going diagonal as we twisted through so i'm just grabbing and twisting just a bit to get them how I want them to be. And we're going to test fit this again. Measure 70 times and still mess up on your cut. So the next step, the thing that I forgot to do, is I'm going to come in, I have the heart set back just a little bit. Hey baby, what's up? Oh, thank you, honey. Is, and I'm going to isolate just the frontmost square wire. And I'm butting this end of my pliers all the way up against the half round we had done. And then twisting in. Just a bit. Hey, Derpy, how's it hanging? And I'm going to flip it around and place my pliers in the exact same location. And twist inward. So there's that. And if you want, just to demonstrate, you could use narrow nosed pliers, like these stepped flat nose, and twist in on the other side, and then grab and then twist back down 
if you want a little bit of like maybe an interesting shape you can come in twist up grab actually I want to try with the big ones on this one and yeah I like that you can get a little bit of like a zigzag so you can straighten that back out maybe and just there on the edge and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side oops and I'm actually just going to come in with my tapered flat nose pliers and I'm going to whoop, to keep to, to, to make just a little bit more space I'm going to remove the, the stone even though in this case it's a wood piece I'm going to come in grab and I'm using my thumb to provide pressure right here so it doesn't distort the shape of our frame and come up and then I'm going to come in here and grab and come up and then I'm just going to open up a little bit more space so that we can fit our stone back in And again, you could use this for a coin wrap. You could use this for literally anything. You just modify the shape of the frame and then go from there. Okay. And so now I like to do just some swirls on one side. So I am going to measure using our stone, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, thanks, lady. Hey, Peace Wolf, how's it going? I'm glad I went, not you. Oh? Did you slip? <laughs> no. Is everything okay? Yeah. What's that? The little trail you made is all ice because there's been so much runoff throughout the oh, day. Oh, really? And it's all frozen. Oh. Well, I'm glad you didn't fall. I certainly would have. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to walk in your little snow prints. Mm-hmm. Such a weird stride. <laughs> I know, I walk like a drunk duck. A little bit. Like, <laughs> I was like, it's, well, it's, 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 I don't know why I'm like this. <laughs> I actually Googled it earlier today because I was like, I think I have a problem. And the internet was like, you're fat and you sit too much. And I was like, yeah, it tracks. <laughs> so that's why I walk like a drunk duck. So, well, we'll work on that when okay. it's not snowy outside. <laughs> Stepped nose, yes. And these ones I got from uh, RioGrande.com. These are the two millimeter, but there's a set that I found on Amazon that's got like three of different sizes. And I'm like, mm, yes, <laughs> I need more tools, clearly. I'm feeling a lot better. It's just my voice is, I've got a bit of laryngitis, I guess. Um, honestly, I think it's just every time I lay down to go to sleep, I cough a whole bunch. And it, it feels like I cleaned out my throat with a stiff bristle brush. Uh oh, I have a sneeze coming. Uh oh. Don't do it. Bitch! Oh. Bitch! Ah! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so I want to do that on both sides. And the way that I'm measuring this, I'm, I'm just coming. I want to be in line with the edge of the heart. Oh my. What up, babe? Because <laughs> you had them on the heater? That's clever. And I'm making sure I'm just getting the ones that's the farthest to each side. Thank you, guys. Double bless you. Ooh. Candy Mountain. Come and trip and the rocks. Now full of fruit. Barns are full of hay Where you hung the jerk that invented work In the big rock candy mountains So I'm just doing whichever ones are easy to get to first And you could add twist it, like you could twist the square wire, you could add coils and stuff, like all sorts of different things lift this just a bit to be able to try to get this through. I'm actually going to start the spiral on this side. Initiate attack sneeze protocols. <laughs> I like that, Tashers. 
Do, 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 do. No, I didn't. I sneezed in the other direction. Which I feel bad though, because I woke up sneezing like on his face. And, I, and he woke up and I was like, he's like, what? And I was like, nothing, baby. It's okay. <laughs> it's a miracle he hasn't gotten sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel so bad, but it's like, because we've been on kissing quarantine for like over a week now. <sighs> it breaks my heart. I live with a beautiful man, the love of my life, and I can't even kiss him. Cough on his face, but... <laughs> and I would never do that on purpose, but we're both sleeping, and we apparently we're still snuggle a bunch in our sleep, so... <laughs> right on, Debbie. Well, it's the, uh, the three P's, or whatever. The P's in the pod are practice, patience, and persistence. It's just, you got to keep at it, and that, that's all right. Okay, so now. Taking that down, we got nine minutes. I think we can do it. Because we're going to need a little bit more. Um, half round. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm going to come in straight up from this center line, but off to the side. Whichever way you're going to be bending, I like to be offset just a bit, because it does get complicated. Like, it's a little, little tricksy. Coming in and bending straight up. And it's still a little off-center. Oh, well. This is life now. Um... Well, I did the wrong wire anyhow. Crap. I wanted to use the centermost wire. We can straighten it back out and pretend like that didn't happen. Ooh, now on job wires time. Let's see if we can grip it. Grip it good. Do, 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 do. You know what an excellent thing to do when you've buggered it up a little bit? And you don't want the world to know, even though you're live streaming it, so now literally everyone knows, is you can twist it. birds and the bees and the cigarette trees and the big rock really the one spot because it was slightly work hardened it didn't twist as much as the others bah. <laughs> bye Chris thanks for hanging out I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit use my bracelet shaping pliers not that I've I've never once in my life to use these for making bracelets but that's just what they're called and we're gonna shape it around we're gonna come in And I'm going to snip at about, like, right here, I think. Now, the only thing is, is twisting your wire up like this is certainly going to work hard in it, like, a bunch. Meh. There you go. So we're going to get a twist going and then come in. And I am going to use my nylon gel pliers to grip so I can... Keep a firm grasp without marring the wire. Ooh, I got tea here. I'm going to drink it. Mm. Twist, twist it good. Do, 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 do. Yeah. We need to get out more. I just repeat what the TV sang to me as a child. <laughs> like... Okay, so there's that. Maybe. You know, and I don't even know if I like that. Oh, well. We'll do one with a twist and one without a twist and see which we prefer. <gasps> Doing a cute little inline rose would have been so... Well, that's all. Oh, thanks, Libby. Ooh, Rhonda says they sell these tiny resin bubble beads on Amazon that I've seen used for faux lamp work polymer clay. Ooh, okay. Very cool. Okay, and now we will do 
do our right angle bends loop and flip it, grab it, and loop. There we go. And now we can come in with that half round wire. And I'm just going to work off the spool on this because I don't, I don't know how much it's going to take. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave about two inches of tail hanging off that away. Now I'm gonna snip it. So something that's a little frustrating, but I totally understand, is whenever they make the coils, the flat side is like out of the half round wire. <clears throat> so it just makes it kind of clumsy to wrap off the spool, but that's fine. And then we're just gonna wrap around. I always think of Oxana whenever I do, um, a bale like this because it's very a very Oxana-esque style of bale with its sleek simplicity and I love it. And then Dr. Teal's Relax and Relief. Is it like a body wash and you detox? Right on. Hey baby, what's up? He's coming up on time. I see that. I'm, that's a race. I hope I win. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we just twist it. It's kind of like just making coils. Which will actually be, I think, lesson four of the Wire Wrapping Master course. We'll be coiling. Ooh, it's a bay. And so we've gotten some, before we get too far, I want to get it scooched down. And I went swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. That's, I went so long without nylon jaw pliers. That's Brandy got me new ones for our anniversary. And um, I, I missed them. They're, they're nice. Ah, uh, hey, Don, thank you. I've, I've been keeping an undercut for about two years now, but I've never gone this short. Um, as I was growing up, my pixie cut. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that length there. Smush, 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 smush. I'm going to give it like a quarter inch more, actually. Nah, I'm going to, it's fine. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to bend this offset just a little bit. So that I've been using every pair of pliers in the house is out. And then just if I'm not brave enough. Ah, uh, it's actually they're I don't know. It's I figure it's my life. I've got to live it the way that I do. It was actually an accident. I was trying to cut my hair and I was sick as a dog and didn't realize I had Randy's one eighth of an inch uh guard on the clippers instead of the one inch that I usually use. So it's like ah. Eh. And if anybody's ever like, you look ridiculous. And I'm like, God didn't make me for being pretty. I'm made for being useful and helpful. So then it really lightens up the pressure on making sure my hair looks good. It's like, being easy on the eyes is the least of the services I hope to offer in this life. I figure Randy didn't divorce me after he saw the haircut, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> it grows back. He'd love me if I was bald or had three purple hairs growing out of my chin. What, purple hair? No, that's where I draw the line. That's where you draw the line? If I just started, it, not dyed, but just sprouting it that color? Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope you'd take me to the doctor before divorcing me. No, no. no that's it. Can't be having that. And it's... I don't know, be brave. You never know who you might inspire to be brave themselves as well. And I'm just using this to kind of messy whip stitch through. And now I'm just going to weave, well not weave, but do a couple grounding coils on this side. The main thing with half round is I just want to make sure that I am not... Um, putting twists in it, unless you want to. If you don't want to, try to avoid it. 
Okay, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to snip. <laughs> and now on this side, I've got this little bit poking out. I'm going to come through and weave around. And don't hesitate to use your pliers instead of your hands. It's going to be clumsy at first, especially if you're new to wire wrapping or crafting, but it really saves your hands in the long run if you're not constantly battling. When metal versus flesh, metal will win most of the time. So it just saves my fingers from getting super torn up and worn out if I just go ahead and use my pliers. <clears throat> Ooh, right on, Gary. I hope I have enough hair to go gray one day. <laughs> like, I don't mind my hair going gray. I just hope I've got more than, like, two strands of it. Then, you know, I may just dolly parton it up and go full on wigs. It'd be a lot easier to do my hair if I could take it off and put it on a mannequin head and style it. Okay, so that's one side. And we could add some more little curly cues and things on this side. And I think I just might. And that way we'll have a slightly more decorative side and a slightly more sleek side. So that way she can flip it around and see however she likes to wear it. Hey, Catherine. She got her headphones on. Hey, Catherine. Catherine, do you want to come see it or do you want me to bring it to you? Oh, she coming to see it. I gotta hurry and get it done. I'm gonna let her pick out her chain too. So I'm Ooh. doing the last wire. Do you like it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you want to pick out which chain that you want to wear it on? Okay. Okay. <laughs> That'd be good. This was a. Thank you for coloring it. Yeah. <laughs> One side is purple, one side is blue. Which side do you like better? The purple side. That's fair. Is it because <laughs> you like purple better? <laughs> purple is a royal color. It is. Okay, let's pull out the chain. Did you see, did you, did you see my... Um... Dude, I admired that whenever <laughs> you came by that butterfly necklace for me. <laughs> okay. Ooh, gold. You want the gold one? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty. It is pretty. What if I... Is it pretty? Do you want to wear it uh, right now or maybe tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Yes, um, I have my butterfly necklace on. That's fair. Do you want to know who put put this on me? Did your dad? Nope, sissy. Oh, that's nice of her. Yeah, sissy did it. Well, Aww. good choice <laughs> with the gold. I like that with the purple. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> Here you go. Ah, thank you. Well, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> you ready for dinner? Me too. <coughs> okay. We're getting this flipped around. Randy has been making cordon bleu and mac and cheese. I've got to go in there and make the broccoli. And then we are going to have our after party from 7.30 until 9 p.m. I have no idea what we're going to be working on. Probably the earrings I was supposed to work on earlier. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um... <laughs> I'm thrilled to have caught alive. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for stopping by. It's really, it's, crafting can get really lonely. And I always appreciate y'all coming and keeping us company. Because it makes our Friday nights feel a lot more like a Friday night. And less like we're just at home by ourselves. <laughs> but it's a party this weekend. we got friends over and everything. So, I got my flat top and dyed the tips purple. My natural color is snowy white. Oh, Letty, that sounds so cool. <laughs> Took months, but everyone said they liked it longer in natural white. Well, my favorite thing, because I've got this hat that I really like to wear when I'm outside because it keeps the sun off of me, but it looks ridiculous. Like, I look deranged when I'm outside. Um, and our friend Betty, Betty Lou, that's our, how do I even, it's our niece's Maddie's grandma. Like, <laughs> but um, she was like, well, that must be your go to hell hat. And I was like, what? She was like, well, if somebody doesn't like it, they can go to hell. <laughs> And I was like, damn, buddy, <laughs> but I mean, it's my, <laughs> so 
thank you all so, so much for coming and hanging out. We will see you in the after party. If you guys are interested in hanging out in the after party, um, you can join us on Patreon in the $1 or $5 tiers, which are the only tiers that we offer over on Patreon now, but you get all the same benefits as in our Happy Crafter Club members. So you can join that. Links for that stuff should be down in the video description below. Um, for just a dollar a month, you make our world go round. And we don't have sponsors. Like, it's entire, our channel is entirely sponsored by y'all. So, this is the only commercial you're going to have to sit through is me being like, if you like our free tutorials, join our Happy Crafter Club, get a 20% off discount to everything in our shop, as well as get first dibs on our shop updates and get access to our after parties. So for a quarter a week, I'd say that's hopefully a, a pretty good bang for your buck, but I'm never going to be here and be like, sign up for pro Namel for your teeth or like, I don't know how many different weird ads that I've had to sit through of like a YouTuber being like this company paid me to say these nice things about this stuff 10% link in the description below and it's like no we're not gonna do that so we just we just beg y'all for money directly so <coughs> Raid Shadow Legends no um <coughs> I'm gonna go die a little bit <coughs> excuse me we will see y'all in the after party. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends, really.